If you think the idea of ancient giants is just a myth, then by the end of this video, you might change your mind. Because by using hard evidence from anthropology, biology, and archaeology, I'm going to show you that not only could giant humans have existed, nature almost seems built to produce them. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history, and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. In 1954, J.R.R. Tolkien published The Lord of the Rings, and with it, he introduced a world where multiple intelligent humanoid species lived side by side, bound together by shared myth, histories, and destiny. But Tolkien didn't pluck hobbits or giants out of thin air, no. He was a scholar of ancient myths, where stories of smaller and larger varieties of people were everywhere. Now, it's always been assumed that these were just that. Fantasies, allegories, exaggerations, a figment of human imagination. But then, something astonishing happened. In 2003, a team of archaeologists digging on the Indonesian island of Flores uncovered the partial skeleton of a tiny adult human, unlike anything seen before. She stood just over a metre tall, had a brain the size of a grapefruit, and yet made sophisticated stone tools. The scientists named her Homo floresiensis. The media called her The Hobbit. And so suddenly, out of nowhere, the idea of hobbits wasn't a myth anymore. No, it was real. But here's the thing. Scientists had already known for decades that something like this should be possible. The phenomenon is called island dwarfism, and it's no fairy tale. It's an evolutionary rule of thumb. Isolated on islands with limited food, fewer predators, and tight ecological constraints, large species tend to shrink dramatically over time. Think dwarf snakes, pygmy hippos, miniature deer. Flores itself once hosted Stegodon, a dwarfed elephant species that shared the island with Homo floresiensis. There's even a fossil record of tiny mammoths on the Greek island of Crete, some the size of ponies. But until Homo floresiensis, no one thought it could apply to humans. Our bodies and brains were supposedly too advanced, too specialised to shrink that dramatically and still retain complex behaviour. But the Flores discovery rewrote that script. Homo floresiensis lived as recently as 50,000 years ago, possibly even later. Not only were they small, but they were intelligent. And this wasn't just one isolated case or a malformed individual. It was a whole population, an entire species of hobbit humans. So this raises a tantalising question. If hobbit-sized humans really existed, then could giant ones have as well? Because here's the thing. Island dwarfism has a mirror image. It goes both ways. It's called island gigantism, and it's just as real and just as strange. When certain animals become isolated on predator-free islands with little competition and abundant resources, they tend to evolve in the opposite direction. Bigger, not smaller. On islands across the world, evolution has produced giant forms of creatures we'd normally think of as small. Rats the size of dogs, flightless birds taller than people, reptiles that grew into armoured giants. Just look at the elephant bird of Madagascar or the Komodo dragon, a surviving relic of this rule. Now this is all very interesting, but what would happen if you applied this evolutionary principle to primates? Would that be possible? Well, it is, and we've already found it. Meet Gigantopithecus. This was a real species of giant ape that roamed the forests of Southeast Asia up to 300,000 years ago. Based on fossil evidence, mostly jawbones and teeth, it's estimated to have stood 10 feet tall and weighed over 1,000 pounds. That's roughly double the size of a modern gorilla. It's likely ate plants, bamboo, fruits, roots. But here's where it gets interesting. It lived in the same regions and timeframes as Homo erectus, and possibly even early Homo sapiens. Some believe these two species may have overlapped. In other words, ancient humans might have encountered actual giants. And thus that begs a radical question. If evolution can give us hobbit humans on an island like Flores, and it can give us giant apes in Southeast Asia, then what's to say it couldn't also give us giant humans? Could myths of giants, told in ancient legends, be distant memories of something real? It's certainly an interesting possibility, but without any evidence, it's just that. So now let's pivot and talk about one of the most mysterious human species we've ever discovered, the Denisovans. In 2010, deep in the Denisova cave in Siberia, researchers found a single pinky bone. At first it seemed unremarkable, but genetic analysis told a different story. 
It belonged to a previously unknown species of ancient human. Not Neanderthal, not Homo sapien, but something entirely distinct. Since then, the trail of the Denisovans has deepened. We've only ever recovered a few fragmentary bones, a molar here, a jaw there. But those fragments reveal something strange. They're big. The molars especially are huge, far larger than any seen in modern humans or even Neanderthals. But then came the bombshell. In 2021, a team of Chinese scientists reanalyzed a remarkably well-preserved skull called the Dragon Man skull. It had an enormous brain case, thick brow ridges, and robust features, suggesting a large, powerful hominin. DNA wasn't initially available, but a few months ago, in 2025, they found some, and it was confirmed that the Dragon Man skull was Denisovan. This means that Denisovans weren't just genetically distinct, they were physically different too, and possibly enormous. Now we know that modern populations in Melanesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Philippines carry up to 5% Denisovan DNA. These aren't just trace fragments, they're some of the highest levels of ancient DNA in any living humans. So while we still don't have a complete Denisovan skeleton, while we don't know how tall they were or how much they weighed, we do know there were enough of them for their genes to survive within us. And we do know that they were large-jawed, large-toothed, and adapted to high-altitude, extreme environments, survivors of the toughest ecosystems on Earth. So we have to ask, did we once live alongside a larger cousin? And is that memory what became our myths of giants? It's certainly possible, but Denisovans aren't the only ones. Back in the early 20th century, researchers digging on the Indonesian island of Java, the same region where Homo erectus was first discovered, uncovered something strange. Fossil fragments of skulls and jaws, massive in size and unusually thick. The finds were named Meganthropus, literally giant man. These individuals were not like normal Homo erectus specimens. Their jawbones alone suggested beings with far more robust builds and far greater bite force. Some reconstructions proposed individuals that could have been seven to eight feet tall, heavily muscled and distinctly humanoid. Anthropology has mostly absorbed Meganthropus into the very robust end of Homo erectus variation or as a non-hominin ape, but the debate isn't settled. Some researchers argue these fossils represent a separate, oversized hominin lineage, one that evolved in Southeast Asia, perhaps in parallel with the Denisovans. But the story doesn't stop there. Across India, Africa and Europe, oversized stone tools, sometimes called giant's tools, have been found in layers dated to hundreds of thousands of years ago. Some of these axes and picks are so large and heavy they would have been extremely difficult to wield by an average-sized human. Mainstream interpretations usually chalk them up to being symbolic, unused, or simply the result of poor craftsmanship. But others wonder, what if these tools were used, just not by humans our size? Could they be traces of a forgotten population of large-bodied hominins? Again, there is no smoking gun. No complete skeleton has been found alongside these tools to confirm their maker's identity. But the pattern is curious. Big jaws in Java, huge molars in Denisova, outsized tools scattered across continents, all dismissed, all explained away. But if we're willing to entertain the reality of hobbit-sized humans, like Homo floresiensis, if we now accept that Denisovans were possibly physically larger, then perhaps we should take these outlier finds a little bit more seriously. Because if even a few of them turn out to be real, then we may be looking at a world where multiple-sized humans once coexisted. Some small, some large, and some very large indeed. So we've been looking at the science, the fossils, the DNA, the tools, but here's where it gets really interesting. Because long before archeologists dug up massive jaws or oversized stone artifacts, humans were already telling stories about giants. Cultures across the world speak of enormous beings who once walked among us. In the Bible, we hear of the Nephilim, mysterious giants, the offsprings of the sons of God and the daughters of men, described as mighty and terrifying. In Norse mythology, there are the Jotnar, Frost giants who predate the gods themselves, often portrayed as ancient, wise, and immensely powerful. In Irish legend, there are the Fomorians, a race of giant beings who fought the early inhabitants of Ireland, beings of immense strength and size. And across North and South American tradition, there are tales of red-haired giants, describing enormous humanoids, often violent and powerful, who had to be defeated or driven away. 
But these aren't just isolated myths, they're remarkably consistent. Beings of great height, strength, and often wisdom or destruction. Beings who once shared the earth with ordinary humans. Until they vanished. So what do we do with that? Modern anthropology tends to see these stories as symbolic, allegories. But there's another possibility, one that aligns with how oral traditions actually work. Myths might preserve distorted memories of real events. Just as some Pacific Islander myths turn out to contain accurate information about ancient tsunamis, and Aboriginal songlines map out real geological features, it's possible that ancient people really did encounter other humans, bigger, stronger, different. And those memories, passed down through countless generations, evolved into legends. What if these stories are echoes, faded but not forgotten, of a time where we weren't alone? Because the truth is, we now know that humans once shared the Earth with at least half a dozen other hominin species, some small, some large, some we've barely even glimpsed in the fossil record. And maybe, just maybe, the stories our ancestors told were their way of remembering. But here's the final twist in the story. What if the giants weren't some mysterious species at all? What if we were the giants? Because when you look at the remains of our own species, Homo sapiens, something surprising shows up. Some early humans were more robust than most people alive today. Take the Cro-Magnon people, Europe's upper Paleolithic Homo sapiens, who lived around 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. Their skeletons show thicker bones, broader chests, and more pronounced muscle attachment sites than those of most modern humans, reflecting a physically demanding lifestyle. Some individuals, especially in certain groups like the Gravettian, exceeded six foot. These weren't frail cave dwellers. They were strong, enduring hunters, adapted to ice age conditions. Why? Because life was physically demanding. Hunting, building shelters, and surviving harsh climates required strength and stamina. Natural selection favoured individuals with robust physiques. But with the arrival of agriculture, diets shifted, disease burdens increased, and daily activity dropped, leading to a measurable reduction in average stature, especially in early farming communities. Now imagine one of these tall, broad-shouldered foragers meeting a shorter, undernourished group. They may have seemed like giants. No supernatural powers, just enough difference in height, strength, and presence to spark a story that could grow into legend over generations. So maybe the legends weren't just about some extinct species or lost hominin. Maybe they were about us, at our most powerful, primal, and physically elite. So let's go back to where we began. J.R.R. Tolkien wasn't just a novelist. He was a scholar, a professor of Anglo-Saxon at Oxford, steeped in ancient languages, forgotten epics, and mythic cycles. His world of hobbits and giants wasn't pure invention, it was a kind of reconstruction, his attempt to revive the deep memory embedded in myth. He didn't create these beings out of thin air, he was channeling something older, something persistent. And now, with modern science uncovering real hobbit-sized humans, with evidence of gigantism shaping animals and maybe even hominins, with mysterious oversized fossils and tools, the stories of giants found on every continent, you have to wonder, was Tolkien's fantasy actually grounded in forgotten reality? Maybe his myths and those of ancient cultures were distorted memories of times when the Earth was a stranger place, full of beings larger or smaller than us, cousins, competitors, or collaborators. So let's ask the question, were ancient giants real? Maybe the idea isn't so crazy after all. Maybe it's not myth. Maybe it's not a story. Maybe it's memory. Thanks so much for watching guys, let me know what you think in the comments below, and as ever, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel.